This is a Raspberry Pi hat. This is a Raspberry Pi hat. This maker coins and compliments a country 3D. <sighs> no, that is not what a pie hat is. This is a Raspberry Pi hat. And if you really want to see what it's about, make sure you watch the rest of this video. Stay tuned. Welcome inside the mind of Matt. And all kidding aside, what we really have is an ATX Raspberry Pi hat. And this is for my Piper project, but I got this Raspberry Pi hat from a gentleman that I met at Murph, and he gave this to me and entrusted me with this that I would include this in some kind of project, which it just happened to be the Piper. I have a few words from Brian. I'm going to introduce him to you and let him tell you a little bit about the pie. Then I'm going to make a few connections. Then we'll continue with a build in a later video. But this is all about this pie hat. So this is Brian. Say hi, Brian. Hello. My name is Brian Anishowski. I'm the creator of BAProjectWorkshop.com. Thank you, Matt, for the opportunity to provide you with one of our boards so that you can have a look and build it into your Piper. Additionally, uh, thanks for the opportunity to provide some in insight and some background onto what the product is and what it does. So about a year and a half ago, I started down the path of working with one of these and found through doing all the upgrades and whatnot to them, because it's a, that's a part of the process. I found that the power distribution, power management, and other bits and pieces around the cheap supplies were a real issue. ANETs, like him, have had lots of issues with uh, fires, lots of connector problems where they're burning up connectors, it's called micro-arcing, and all sorts of problems and so on. Additionally, I wanted to be able to power the Pi. There were a lot of great articles online, and um, I provide credits for a lot of that stuff uh, out on the site on how to use an ATX supply to do this. May of last year, I came out with a prototype of a very small board that essentially managed turning the supplies on and off, some LEDs, some packaging, some circuit boards, those sorts of things. It, it didn't go very well, and over time, we developed uh, a board called the ATX Pi Hat. And what this essentially is, makes the process of integrating ATX supplies into 12 and 5 volt applications as well as being managed by Raspberry Pi simple, absolutely simple. Uh, you essentially plug in the power supply, plug the, plug the Pi hat. Um, hats are boards that sit on top of Pi's. Uh, in the Arduino world they're called sh uh, shields, in the Pi world they're called hats. So essentially you plug the 24 pin ATX Molex connector directly into the ATX Pi hat and you then plug that into the Pi and you're as good to go. About a month ago we came out with the ATX Pi hat Zero which handles much higher amperage uh, and I'll get into the features of the different, uh, the different boards. The one that Matt is working on, and thank you very much for the opportunity to work with you, is the V1. It is uh, rated for just under 20 amps at 12 volts, which is perfect for most basic applications. When the heat beds get a little bigger, you need to go up to, towards 36 amps, and that's what the Zero does. However, the Pi Hat V1, the ATX Pi Hat V1, has a monitored fan. Uh, that's a standard 12 volt PC-based fan. It has an emergency power off switch. It has uh, a driver for RGB LED strips, as well as the ability to dim them and color and change their color and so on. Um, that can also be controlled by G-code. 
So while the printer's printing, you can send different colors to whatever you want the script to do. Additionally, it has a five or 12 volt switchable PWM capability as well for doing things like driving uh, relays, for powering lighting, for a myriad of applications. And you can dim it and those sorts of things. And that's also controlled by GECO. Additionally, the V1 monitors the voltage and amperage that's being used by the Pi Hat and the printer. This is sort of an interesting approach because what it does is one of the hidden costs of doing 3D printing is everybody looks at the cost of the filament and or the time. They're not looking at the power cost that's associated with it. So we've got some plans to do some very crude estimating of the cost based on kilowatt hour. Now mind you, very rough uh, and so on, but it also has the ability to monitor amperage over. So one of the problems that the ANETs have, as well as a lot of other sort of lower end sub $400 printers, is when there is a power problem and you, you can get power runaway, meaning it will continue to draw amperage uh, and can start shorting out cables and so on. Well, the software allows you to monitor the amperage and can actually shut down the printer when it exceeds a certain level. Uh, additionally, it works the same way with the fan. If the fan stops functioning for whatever reason, the, Pi, uh, the ATX Pi Hat can shut down uh, the printer. Additionally, we also have an emergency power off uh, capability built into the board as well. So you hit the button, it makes sure that the printer is shut down properly, it powers it down, disconnects, does basically all of the bits and pieces necessary to make sure that the printer comes down nice and simply. Now, the ATX Pi Hat Zero, which is this one, and again, Matt isn't uh, currently working with this one. This one, uh, this board in particular, goes up to 36 amps uh, at 12 volts. It does not have the monitoring uh, built into, into it for amperage and voltage. We had some folks that just said, hey, you know, I really am not interested in that particular functionality. The other thing that it doesn't do natively, it doesn't do the RGB or the switching natively, but what it does do is it provides I.O. ports for things like managing temperature and humidity sensors or filament out sensors and so on. It does have a five volt out, uh, that's not controllable by G-code, but for the most part, it's a, sort of a slimmed down, higher, more control of the uh, V1 board. We've got many other sorts of projects going on. Uh, one of the things we do provide is a fully integrated plugin into Octoprint. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to use that. A lot, if not all, the documentation for the schematics as well as uh, the plugin software is fully available. Uh, so you can download it and do your own. And if you get a hold of me, I can definitely help you with that. Just go out to baprojectworkshop.com and click contact us and uh, send me a note and we'll uh, take a look. Matt's implementation is going to be for running uh, his ramps board as well as his hot end. Uh, as for the heat bed, since he's going with a 24 volt or I think, a, a, I think an AC, um, heat bed, this unit will not do that. However, one of the things that it can do is pop the, or switch, and using an external relay, turning on the power to the bed. Uh, the control signals come from the ramps board, but uh, the actual on-off for the heat bed could be driven by the Pi Hat. These are for sale. Um, I have them out at the store, as well as lots of peripheral devices. Right now, for the Zero, we've got uh, one filament sensor. I've got a two-wire filament sensor that's on the design board, and we're building it right now. Uh, we have a DS-style single-wire temperature, and I'm just getting ready to post DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor. So. What's nice about the Zero is if you're dealing with an enclosure for doing things like ABS or other sort of very sensitive products or filaments, you can monitor the inside of the cabinet for temperature and whatnot. The fan can be used to vent the cabinet as well to sort of keep at least uh, some of the hot air out of the enclosure. 
Uh, if they can get too hot in there, you can start getting all kinds of interesting issues with cables and whatnot. So if you're interested, please go out to baprojectworkshop.com. Uh, thank you for your time. And Matt, good luck with the project. If you have any questions or problems or issues, get a hold of me. Just go through the contact us. We have customers all over the world. We've got a customer in Australia. We've got customers all over Europe, England, the United States. I think we've got a customer in Canada. So we've got them all over. So again, thank you very much for your time today and good luck with your build. All right, so a closer look at this pie hat. As you see, it's got the connection for the ATX power supply that goes in here. It's got multiple voltage outputs on here. It's got a fan output, an RGB output here. Not sure exactly what that does, but there is a full schematic available on the website. So I've got an ATX power supply right here. Compliments of TH3D studios.com once again thank you very much there's a link for his website in the description instead of having to cut all these cables and figure out what color goes to what I find the big connector right there Ooh, this doesn't have the right connector Okay, well, that kind of puts a damper in it, the plans, but as you see here, it's got the GPIO pin rail, and it lines up with this guy, just like that, and we have a pie hat. So I've got some more work to do on this project, but I did want to highlight and thank Brian for providing me with this pie hat to work on my Piper project. If you haven't checked out that Piper project, I'll make sure that there's a card right up there. I'll be heading to Earth here in a few days, actually a few hours by the time you see this video. So stay tuned and make sure you subscribed and you got your notifications on because I will have all kinds of footage for that. And then once I get back, I will continue the build on the Piper. So stay tuned. Thanks again, everybody, for stopping inside the mind of Matt. Happy printing. Be safe pouring. Mm, finally, I get to eat the pie.